All right, guys, the first thing we're going to talk about today in terms of our internal environment is, is looking at these key concepts of resources, capabilities, and core competencies. And, and you'll notice as we go on that each of them are related to one another, um, but there are important distinctions that you do need to make. And, and, and we're going to talk about how each of them has a flow-on effect which will hopefully end up leading to your firm having a source of sustainable competitive advantage. All right, so the first thing, as you can see here, that we're going to talk about are a firm's resources, and they are a source of a firm's capability. So the capabilities of a firm are built on those resources. When we discuss what resources a firm has at its disposal, they do tend to be quite broad. So we talk about things in a very general sense and, and also cover a spectrum of individual, social and organisational phenomena. Um, as it says there, they do represent inputs into a firm's production process, so it's most easy when we think of a firm's resources to think about what are the things that they actually put into their production process, what are the things that contribute to them being able to make or deliver what are the, whatever it is that they make or, or, or service that they provide. They do not, and this is the important part, they do not yield a competitive advantage or create value that results in above average returns on their own. That is to say, for example, a brand is not going to be of any use, particularly long term, to an organisation unless you're able to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about in terms of capabilities, where capabilities tend to be involved with the use of resources and the combination of, of at least a couple of different resources to put together. All right, so there are, there are two broad categories of resources that we can talk about. Uh, and certainly the first one we're going to look at here is tangible resources. These are those things that can be observed and quantified. They tend to be those resources and assets that you can literally touch and you can see them and that, that you can readily identify them. As a result, uh, what, or what we do tend to find rather is that their value does tend to be quite limited. Um, certainly in terms of delivering a source of competitive, sustainable competitive advantage rather, um, mainly because they are hard to leverage. Now what that means is a plane, for example, which obviously represents a, a significant uh, tangible resource if you're an airline manufacturer or an airline uh, service provider, they cannot be in multiple places and flying, for example, five different routes at the same time. Obviously, one plane can only ever be doing one thing in one place at the same time. Uh, many processes necessary to use these tangible assets, therefore, uh, do tend to be in what we call intangible, and we'll touch on those in a minute. What that means is that our capabilities tend to be built on the combination of, of skills and so on to act, that are required to use these tangible assets to form our capabilities, as I say. So we've got some examples here of the different types of tangible resources. As you can see, the first here is financial resources, uh, something the Trump Corporation, obviously, as you can see here, um, would be very, very well endowed with uh, in terms of their borrowing capacity and their ability to generate internal funds. Having said that, you obviously don't want to make a gag at uh, Royal Donald's expense. They will be held to pay. There are also organisational resources such as the form's formal reporting structure. So obviously if you develop systems and processes there, that can be really valuable to the firm, um, as well as its formal planning, controlling and coordinating systems. The most commonly uh, recognised and thought of tangible resources are a firm's physical resources. So the sophistication and location of a firm's plant, that is the, the, the basic factory itself that manufactures whatever it is that your firm makes, as well as the equipment and technology within that plant that are used to manufacture whatever it is you make. The raw materials that you put into that production process as well are obviously crucial if you're building planes, and you're not going to be able to do that without the use of steel. Finally, we have our technological resources, which include things like the stock of technology, patents, trademarks, copyrights and trade secrets as well. Going back to that example of the plane, I've got a short video here that demonstrates uh, the use of, especially from the point of physical resources, how certain firms now within the airline industry are looking to use their tangible resources as a source of competitive advantage here. Sitting in the first class section of a plane was luxurious. You need to see what Etihad Airways will soon be offering travelers. The company recently redesigned and renamed several cabins on its Airbus A380 and Boeing 787 Dreamliner jets, making it abundantly clear that Etihad is taking the cake when it comes to upscale air accommodations. 
DB cabin available only on the airline's A380 jets is being referred to as the residence by heavy hat. One or two passengers traveling together can relax in the three-room VIP suite, which includes a double bedroom, shower, and living room. The upper deck of the new jets offer nine apartments, which are basically private suites with a full bed and reclining lounge seating. These apartments come equipped with a personal vanity, swiveling TV, and a wardrobe. As for the Boeing Dreamliners, the new revamped versions will be delivered this October. They will all house numerous first suites, which will all contain an over 80-inch long bed, 24-inch TV monitor, mini bar, seating area, and an ottoman. Etihad Airways President and CEO James Hogan stated, These new living spaces will raise in-flight product and service standards to their highest level yet in commercial aviation and alter air travelers' expectations of in-flight comfort and luxury forever. Not bad, hey. All I need to do now is stop showing Twilight and I'll be fine. Alright, before I offend too many more people, let's move on to intangible resources now. And, and as I touched on already, these are those resources, unlike the tangible ones, that cannot be observed or quantified, that you can't physically put, hold it up in front of your face and see it. And, and as a result, they, because of that, they do tend to be more difficult for your competitors to analyse and, and potentially copy or imitate, which is obviously advantageous to your firm. Obviously, the more difficult it is for competitors to imitate your resources, the greater chance that you will have a competitive advantage. They tend to be a superior source of capabilities and, and subsequently core competencies. This is mainly because unlike our tangible resources, they can be leveraged. Uh, so a common example, a uh, commonly thought of example of an intangible resource is a firm's reputation, its brand, its image and the prestige that comes with it. Um, and that can be used by many people and groups at once all over the world. So obviously, if we're looking at a firm like Nike, as we can see up the top, they have a, a prestige or, or certainly a brand reputation that can be used all over the entire company. So it doesn't matter whether you're Nike in North America, Nike in Australia, Nike in Europe. They have that reputation that transcends those na national borders and barriers and can be utilised and leveraged across the entire organisation. In terms of the different types of intangible resources, human resources are a very common one the knowledge, trust, managerial capabilities and organisational routines that come with having certain people within your organisation. So obviously our man Steve Jobs up here at the top, one of the key people in, uh, in leading or basically creating the success at Apple. He played a, a key part in that and has proven to be quite difficult to replace after his sad passing. There are also innovation resources, so the ability of firms to create new ideas, to have scientific capabilities, as well as the capacity to innovate. We're going to talk a lot throughout the semester about that concept of innovation and how important it is to firms in creating competitive, sustainable, sustainable rather competitive advantage. Finally, there are also reputational resources, as we've touched on already, the reputation with customers, the brand name and perceptions of product quality, durability and reliability. McDonald's, for example, are a great, a great example because everybody knows what that symbol up the top means. The same with the Nike symbol up here. As instantly, we look at that and we know that is McDonald's. We know this is Nike. Also, we, there can also be the reputation with the suppliers, which can also be a key contributing factor to a firm's competitive advantage. Uh, having things like efficient, effective, supportive and mutually beneficial interactions and relationships with your suppliers can be really important for a firm.